Good morning. Welcome to a completely normal service with nothing different whatsoever. As you can tell, this is BBS Sunday. Uh, so as you can see, I have, I've tried to represent as many of the color groups of BBS as I could. Uh, I got green, purple, blue, and red. As it turns out, I don't own any orange, because orange is not a liturgical color. Uh, so I, I had to apologize person by person to the orange group and say I was not sliding them. I just don't own orange. And now what you're all going to do is buy me orange. But don't. I, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Uh, so BBS day, so there's going to be lots of singing, lots of dancing, lots of loud. Um, and normally these BBS uh, uh, services, the kids get up here, and then it finishes, and then you leave. But this Sunday, and all the Sundays of August, we're going to be doing communion. Because uh, we're trying out communion every Sunday to see what you think, to see what you feel about having communion every Sunday rather than every other Sunday. And communion is going to be done by intention. Uh, an ancient method uh, used to be called traitor's communion, uh, as uh, Judas was the one that dipped his hand in the bread or in the wine, or dipped his bread in the wine, depending on your reading. Uh, so ancient practice of communion, we're going to try it out. Uh, there have been suggestions on how to do it a little bit differently. We're going to keep it as straightforward as possible. So for the community, you're going to come forward just as you normally would this way. And you're going to get a piece of bread. And then you're going to dip it in either the wine or the grape juice, which will be in cups. Uh, and then you can come forward. And if you want to spend some time and pray, you totally can. Uh, uh, but it's, it's going to be uh, a little bit different. And the... The great thing about starting it on BBS Sunday is if anything goes wrong, it was the, completely the youth's fault. Uh, so you can't blame me. We, we planned it perfectly and then they screwed it up. So, uh, no, no, it's all on me. Uh, so, the theme for today is God's Big Backyard. So that's why you see uh, the picnic table for our altar today. Uh, you got the trees and the, the foliage and everything going on here. So it is an exciting day. I was a little nervous coming today because in the bulletin you'll see there's no order of worship. Uh, and, and I was thinking, Christy has had a lot on her mind, but you are in for a treat today. Uh, so uh, before I forget, uh, our uh, outdoor worship is on August 23rd. I believe? Yes. Yes. And so we need sign-ups for that. Uh, and, and so that's out there. Uh, and then there's also the carnivals coming up August 15th. And we're already starting our raffle tickets for the baskets for the carnival. So please check those out after the service. Uh, before I go too far, big, big thanks to Christy and all she does to make BBS. <laughs> performance uh, as our worker behind the scenes, but she was so behind the scenes that she wasn't even here uh, in, the, in the room. Uh, so big, big thank you. To <laughs> this is Tracy's last year as the planner of VBS. Uh, of course, we're going to uh, sucker her into being a volunteer next year for VBS, but this is her last year as planner, and, and Danelle is going to be stepping in. Uh, as the event coordinator for that. So, uh, we are so glad that you're here. Just a reminder that everything that happens today is on purpose. So I'm going to invite Christy up to show you God's big backyard.
was serve family. We read the story of baby Moses in a basket in the river. We learned how his mom and sister made sure he was taken care of. Family cares for each other.
Mike. Uh, here we have one through twelve. Yeah. Anyways. <laughs> the reading is from Mark chapter two, verses one through twelve. You get that time? Yes. A few days later, when Jesus again entered Capernaum, the people heard that he had come home. They gathered in such large numbers that there was no room left, not even outside the door, and he preached the word to them. Some men came, bringing to him a paralyzed man, carried by four of them. Since they could not get him to Jesus because of the crowd, they made an opening in the roof above Jesus by digging through it, and then lowered the mat the man was lying on. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralyzed man, <laughs> now some teachers of the law. <coughs> Now some teachers of the no that's okay sorry this phone is okay when Jesus saw their faith he said to the paralyzed man son your sins are forgiven now some teachers of the law were sitting there thinking to themselves why does this fellow talk like that he's bl uh, blaspheming who can forgive sins but God alone immediately Jesus knew in his spirit that this was what they were thinking in their hearts and he said to them. Why are you thinking these things? Which is easier, to say to this paralyzed man, your sins are forgiven, or to say, get up and take your mat and walk? But I want you to know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. So he said to the man, I tell you, get up, take your mat, and go home. He got up, took his mat, and walked out in full view of them all. This amazed everyone, and they praised God, saying, we have never seen anything like this. Friends help each other. Hi, my name is Juliana, and I was a part of the group, er, the blue group this year. Um, I grew up going to BBS, and it was always just so much fun. The leaders, the kids, you just feed off of each other. Um, this year personally was my favorite year. I don't know why. I just I loved every energy and like I don't know. I love UBS. It's a fun way to learn about God. Yeah. <laughs> so tell us a favorite moment. A favorite moment would be. I don't know. They're they're all good. I don't know what to choose. What things do we do that make you love? <laughs> I would say story time. I think that was my point. Because you got to like, I don't know, learn more. It was more in depth in the story time. Uh, each station we learned something about that had to do with the day. But I don't know, I, for me, the story time was like where I could learn everything. And then it could just follow throughout the day of what every station was about. <laughs> Thank you. 
Jesus answered, The first is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these.
your arms, O oh God, and let them know that they are lovingly cared for. Lord, in your mercy, into your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Together we remember the night in which our Lord Jesus was betrayed. He took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, broken for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people the forgiveness of sin. And this is often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. Remembering his life, his death, and his promise to come again, let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Thanksgiving used to be at my Aunt Gretchen's. And every time there were new kids, we just added another table. <laughs> Until we had tables stretching through the hallways and into the different rooms of the house. So we could all eat at one big table. That's what I picture when I think about God's big backyard, a picnic table that stretches on forever. And somehow we can see everybody. Somehow we can see all these people, all these loved ones, all this family that we don't always realize is part of our family. So having this on a picnic table is perfect. Because it reminds us that these meals aren't just for here, but they're for wherever we go. 
out into the world, whatever we face, God goes with us. That's why we take God in. That's why we drink and taste. Because we realize that God becomes part of us. And nothing, not inside or outside, not hot or cold, not rain or storm, can separate us from the love of God. So communion for this Sunday is going to be in tension. And we are going to survive <laughs> So what's going to happen is you are going to come forward and you're going to receive, hopefully, a long strip of bread. And then you're going to take that, and you're going to dip that in either the wine, and the wine is just the plain cup. The grape juice has a sticker on it that says, grape juice. <laughs> you dip it into either one of those, and then you go ahead and eat it right away. And then you're invited to, if you want to, you can spend time in the middle uh, continuing in prayer, or you can return to your seat in prayer. It'll be time for you. I guarantee you, at least one person will eat their bread before they get to the cup. Maybe more. That is okay. I will give you a second piece. Don't feel bad. We are learning this together. We are going through this together. We are experiencing God's big backyard together. Each and every one of you are invited. Each and every one of you are welcome. But in the meantime, go ahead and take a seat as we figure out what we're doing up here.